Altitude can be a killer. I mean, literally, of course, in extreme cases, but also to the hopes and dreams of professional cyclists, because it has a seriously big effect on performance. But we want to know just how big of an effect does it really have? Sci, it's time for some science. Science. The Giro d'Italia goes up to an altitude of 2,700 metres in 2016. Now that's an altitude at which the amount of oxygen in the air decreases from 21% at sea level to just 15%. So in real terms then, for every lungful of air that you breathe in, you get 25% fewer oxygen molecules available to enter your bloodstream and then also your muscles. Now if you've ridden at altitude before, you'll know how it feels. But if you haven't, let me explain. Well first off, you'll feel out of breath and secondly, you'll really struggle to recover from repeated efforts. But how much does that actually affect your performance? Can you compensate by breathing faster and can you produce the same amount of power? To find out, we have come to the University of Kent in the UK to use not only the altitude chamber, but also borrow the considerable intellect of Professor Louis Passfield, a man who once used Matt as a human guinea pig, and was also a former coach of mine, showing that he can literally work with anything. Yeah, today we're gonna to carry out two tests. Now, the first of which will be at sea level. We're gonna be riding at a given power using a watt bike, so we've got really accurate power data. And then we're gonna measure our oxygen saturation and expired gases. And then, after a cup of tea and a lie down, we're gonna repeat the experiment. Except this time, we're gonna do it 2,700 metres, the same as the summit of the Colle dell'Agnello on stage 20 of the Giro d'Italia. But unfortunately without the same magnificent and inspirational views. No, no, I brought one, mate. Have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind, kind of majestic and magnificent. All right, run number one. You're right, sorry. Yes, thanks, mate. I wouldn't worry too much today because uh, these are completely stable. No corner involved, mate. It was gravelly. It was wet. It's grassy. Ready? Yeah. No excuses. I've got them all lined up. So when we go to altitude, what happens is that gradually the, the pressure drops. So the higher we go, the lower the pressure. And this reduces the amount of oxygen we can bring into the body. And we need that oxygen for energy. So the higher we go, the less oxygen we get, and the more the body struggles. In particular, what happens is that we can see the difference in the oxygen concentration in the blood. And that begins to lower. And so the muscles get lo lower oxygen, and then the whole body becomes really stressed. In addition, voluntarily, our brains start to down-regulate and restrict our um, effort because we perceive the effort to be much harder than it would be when we were, were exercising at sea level. So what we're doing with the guys here is they're exercising in a normal lab environment at sea level and then what we're going to do is take them up the Col de Medway, our University of Kent's chamber, and simulate the same experience but now at 2,700 metres. So the oxygen concentration will have dropped by around about 5 or 6 percent and we'll see how much difference that makes to their physiology. We'll see their heart rates go up, we'll see their oxygen saturations drop and their ventilation uh, increase as well to try and compensate for that lack of oxygen availability. Well, the results for round one are in, but we've now moved to the altitude chamber, replicating 2,700 metres above sea level. Yeah, now this is going to be really interesting, particularly seeing how each of us react individually, because mm. when I raised the altitude, I never really enjoyed it. In fact, I pretty much felt like I'd just sucked. Whereas Matt, however, Matt seemed to thrive. Well, it was 20 years ago, so I think we're a little bit different. But yeah, I seemed to ride really well. That was at the World Championships up in Colombia. But uh, well, he says really well, what it means is seventh place. Well, you know, but uh, no, but really interesting to see what the differences are now. I must admit, I'm just a little bit nervous. Yeah, me too. I think I might have bit more than I can chew, Matt.
some data, Louis. Well, I have my highly scientific envelope with all the data carefully transcribed upon it. So the first thing that we see is that, um, as you'd expect in an altitude environment, the oxygen levels in your blood have dropped considerably. So in the lab at sea level, what we typically expect to see is around 95 to 99% of the full oxygen available in your blood. And that's what we have with the data here. When you go to altitude, however, and once you came into this chamber, it dropped markedly. So Simon, your figures dropped down to 84%. Matt, yours down to 81 I'm So, So much less oxygen in your blood. And of course, that then triggers the stress that you felt and were reporting from the ride itself. Yeah. So the follow-on then is what kind of things change to try and help you manage your way through that environment with a lower oxygen. And the first thing we see is your breathing frequency went up markedly as you're struggling to get more air in. So Matt, in the lab you were uh, running at 45 breaths per minute, which is typical for someone that's working hard but in a sustainable way. In here, it jumped up to 72. That means you're really panting. It wasn't sustainable. Exactly. Tell that. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, your picture is the same, but in, in the lab you were already working quite hard, so the change is less marked. But yeah. again, we see an increase in your breathing frequency. And because of that, the amount of air you shifted in and out of your lungs went up too. So in your case, Matt, it went up by uh, nearly 25, watt, 25 litres. Mm. Uh, uh, sorry. And Simon, yours was just over 20 litres. So that's 20 litres more air going in and out of your lungs every minute to try and get that vital oxygen out, yeah. out of the air. And then from a metabolic point of view, how much stress your muscles are under, we measure the lactic acid. Um, Matt, yours was nicely in control the first time, so you had a value of four, and then that jumped to 10.7, so nearly 11 after the second ride. Timing. Again, that shows your muscles are really under stress and yep. you're not going to keep that effort going for very long. Simon, you went to the max both times pretty much. Even so, the second time was slightly higher, but the difference is your power output was so much lower. Yeah. So that same level of, of muscle stress was achieved at a much, much lower power output once you went into hypoxia. So that kind of gives you a feel for, for some of the physiology that's underpinning those, those um, adaptations to, or the stress of being at altitude. It does, yeah. It's fascinating, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Now, if we put that in the context of a professional peloton, uh, how much difference are we going to see between individual riders and their ability to acclimatise to altitude or do you just cope with it on a climb by climb basis? Yeah. That, uh, that's a really in interesting question because what happens is there's a whole range of shifts that happen within the body to try and enable you to, uh, to accommodate all those stresses that are going on and without question we know that different riders will adapt in different ways um, and so you'll see some riders that, that transition to altitude really quite smoothly with a minimal um, stress whereas other riders will take a long time. Well, without a shadow of a doubt, looking at the statistics and looking at the way we felt, riding at altitude does make a significant difference to your performance without a shadow of a doubt. It does. And if anyone out there is watching, hopefully not going into the red, uh, is a valuable lesson to you. Yeah, don't do what Simon did at altitude. It's not a very good idea. Now, for another GCN Does Science video, if you click just up there, then you can check out how important saddle height is. We did some tests on that, if you remember. We certainly did. And for all things Giro d'Italia, how about clicking just down here, and there you'll find our Giro playlist. Yeah, otherwise, before you go to either of those, do make sure you subscribe to GCN. To do that, you can click on the globe. Thanks, mate.